You're watching Tag TV. You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's three-nation visit to Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore in the line of India's Act East policy, which envisions a deeper Indian engagement with ASEAN countries through multilayered talks and strategies in order to improve bilateral and multilateral ties. A report. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who has established himself as a global leader by virtue of his global perspective and policies, received a warm reception as he reached Jakarta for a bilateral talk with Indonesian President Joko Widodo in a bid to further improve ties between the two countries. Modi and Widodo signed pacts on cooperation in the pharmaceuticals and technology industries and pledged to step up defence and maritime cooperation with plans to develop a strategic Indonesian naval port in the Indian Ocean. Modi asserted on how the people of the region and especially India and Indonesia were needed to cooperate at their level to further boost the pace of bilateral development. Hamari aane wali pediyan, bhavish mein, hamara people to people contacts, aur kaise badhe, kaise majood ho, kaise ye parapara jivant rahe, इस पर भी हमें मिलकर के काम करना होगा और हर भारतीय की जिम्मेवारी जरा ज्यादा है। Both leaders shared a moment of joy as they flew kites after inaugurating an annual kite festival themed on stories of Hindu epics, Ramayana and Mahabharat. India, which has emerged as a prominent player on the global stage in recent times, also expressed its interest in building infrastructure in across South Asia. There are several Indian companies that have the capability and are interested in building port infrastructure, including seaports and container ports and airports. So really the connectivity was a wider one, including um, air services, etc. So in the larger context of Sabang, uh, details were not discussed, but there is potential for discussing all areas of collaboration with the active participation of in Indian and Indonesian companies. Modi also met his Malaysian counterpart Mahathir Mohammad, who recently came to power in Kuala Lumpur. Both leaders reviewed entire gamut of bilateral ties and committed on further improving bilateral ties multiple level of cooperation. Mahathir said both leaders talked about cooperation on investment and exchanged opinions on technology and education development. Well, we had a very good discussion on how uh, Malaysia and India can work together in many fields in the field of uh, uh, technology uh, there is great room for trade more more room for trade than before and uh, i think uh, they have done certain things with the way they teach in school which we are interested to find out india and malaysia have deep historical and cultural relations dating back to ancient times Malaysia is home to a strong concentration of Indian immigrants who form at least 7% of Malaysia's population. Bilateral trade volume between the two countries stood at $10.5 billion in 2017 and is poised to reach $25 billion by 2020. Modi reiterated his stance of greater cooperation and deeper engagement in Singapore, which was the third and the final leg of the official tour. He underscored the important relationship both countries carried. Political relations between India and Singapore are among the warmest and closest. There are no contents or claims or doubts. It is a natural partnership from a shared vision. Our defense relations are among the strongest for both. 
Modi unveiled India's aspirations of developing robust multilateral ties with ASEAN, for which he said Singapore was the gateway. We will work with all, most of all with ASEAN to reach an early conclusion to regional comprehensive economic partnership. As India's engagement with the region grows, will remain gateway to ASEAN and the broader East. India, in its outreach to ASEAN countries, has reaffirmed that it will make the business process easier and smoother. It has also asserted on working for an open, stable and fair international trade regime. A successful blend of diplomacy and economic policies has provided further impetus to India's growing leverage on regional and global platform. Moving on. Enforced disappearances of political activists and intellectuals remain a major concern in Pakistan. They are allegedly being abducted, tortured and killed by the security forces. Recently, members of the Sindhi community observed a day-long hunger strike in front of Pakistan embassy in London. We have a report. The sit in front of the High Commission of Pakistan in London was organized by World Sindhi Congress to condemn the atrocities committed by Pakistan against the political activists and intellectuals of Sindh. They shouted anti Pakistan and anti army slogans alleging their direct involvement in the abduction of Sindhi activists. To release all missing persons who are human rights activists, political workers <coughs> and who are demanding for right of self-determination for Sindhi people and uh, we demand from Pakistan government to release all missing persons. There have been over 1,200 known cases of enforced disappearances in Sindh province of Pakistan since 2010. The past year has seen a surge in the cases with 160 people disappearing since February 2017. Same is the situation in other provinces like Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa where political activists and intellectuals are being targeted by the security agencies. The activists demand action to end these erroneous human rights violations. Amare Balochistan mein yahi surat hal hai. Bachon ko uta ke unko qatl kiya jata hai, unki laashe phenk di jati hai. Ye koi aur chhor aur takhet nahi karte. Ye hamare state ke wo log hain jo unki zimmedari ye hoti hai ki ye logon ki protection kare, unki zindagi ko ki guarantee de de, unko musibat se bachaye. The disappeared are often human rights and political activists or journalists who have spoken out or against the government's policies and actions against Sindhi people, including environmental degradation, the mall adaptation of ancestral lands, displacement and the loss of livelihoods, and large-scale development projects without the consultation or consent of the local communities. Security forces abduct the activists and journalists and hold them incommunicado for anywhere from days to years. The friends and families of the disappeared live in a constant state of fear. Moving on to Nepal, where the newly elected government of Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli presented federal budget for the fiscal year 2018-19. The government aims to collect more revenues in the upcoming fiscal year and plans to give push to sectors like infrastructure, tourism, energy and agriculture. We have a report. <laughs> Nepal's finance minister Yubaraj Khatiwada unveiled a union budget of 1,315 billion Nepali rupees for the fiscal 2018-19 in a joint session of the House of Representatives and National Assembly. 
The major focus was laid on transforming the production and development of physical infrastructure. Out of the total budget, government aims to utilize rupees 845.5 billion as recurrent expenditure. Likewise, rupees 314.28 billion and rupees 155.18 billion have been earmarked for capital expenditure and financing provision, respectively. Economic growth in the upcoming fiscal has been projected at 8%. The <laughs> Government has given priority on to generate employment opportunities, promoting agriculture and tourism sectors, conserving water resources, enhancing quality of public service delivery in the budget. The fiscal budget has also announced a loan of rupees 700,000 to youths against collateral of their academic certificates. <laughs> रिण दिने र यसले चाहिँ शैक्षिक बेरोजगार लाई चाहिँ अन्त्य गर्ने जुन देखिएको छ यो चाहिँ धेरै खुसीको कुरा छ समग्रमा यो बजेटले नेपाली युवाहरुको लागि र नेपाली विद्यार्थीहरुलाई निकै राम्रो काम गरेको छ With the aim of tapping the inflation at 5% the government has decided to clear the debt of the small farmers which has increased the confidence of the people the first communist budget after the adaptation of the federalism has sanctioned 56.41 billion rupees for the health, 134 billion for the education, science and technology, 33.71 billion for the agriculture, 5.20 billion for the tourism and 3.89 billion for the energy sector. Infrastructure development is one of the prime challenges for newly elected government of Prime Minister Oli. The country is still recovering from the devastating earthquake of 2015. We are now joined by Sujan Dhungana, a senior journalist and an expert in economic affairs of Nepal to speak further over the budget. Mr. Dhungana, do you think the budget released has met the expectations of the people of the country? Uh, well, this budget had a lot of expectations, uh, not only with people but with the entire nation. Uh, this was basically because uh, this budget uh, that was unveiled by uh, Finance Minister last Tuesday was the first budget after uh, the successful completion of the three layers of uh, election in the country. So in this sense, people, people and the entire nation, they were looking for whether this budget will uh, be able to address key issues of economic growth and development in the country or not. So in that part, I believe that the budget has partially addressed development agenda, agendas and uh, the economic growth issues that is uh, necessary in the new federal system of governance. The province number two always has been in the limelight. Do you think that budget has provided enough to convince the leaders of Madhes? As the uh, budget has uh, allocated enough sum of money to different uh, provincial and the local levels uh, on an equal basis, that gives a sense that uh, it has prior prioritized province number two as well. However, saying that protests are still ongoing in that province and political leaders are uh, against the uh, government for not incorporating basic issues uh, that has that was uh, uh, necessary for the province to however what i believe is that now the government should uh, come and talk to uh, the leaders uh, the protesters and uh, even the leaders of the opposition party uh, related to province to to uh, sort out the issue on time Finance Minister has set a growth target of 8% for the coming fiscal year. Do you think the government will be able to meet its target? I believe that as the government has said to uh, prioritize the completion of different uh, mega infrastructure projects and uh, formation of different job uh, employment opportunities in the country, if this can be capitalized on time with, uh, with, fo uh, with high focus on uh, implementation part, I believe that this is realistic. On top of that, I would like to say this, however, is very challenging as well. So, 
a holistic approach to uh, economic growth development process and enhancing economic activity can lead to uh, that target in the recent future. Thank you Mr. Dhungana. Moving on to Afghanistan where the security crisis has starkly deepened owing to the sudden escalation in the long-standing terror offensive of insurgent groups. The Taliban and the Islamic State that are seemingly operating in cohesion have killed more than a hundred in recent weeks. The attacks that have particularly gained momentum in the run-up to the presidential elections slated later this year now pose a greater challenge in front of an already weak and fragile Ghani government and all of its international allies. A report. Kabul, arguably the most insecure capital city in the world, was yet again targeted by messengers of terror and violence as gunmen armed with assault rifles and grenade launchers stormed the headquarters of the Interior Ministry of Afghanistan, killing at least one police officer and wounding five others. In a coordinated exercise and what could now be termed as a modus operandi of terror groups based in Afghanistan, first a car bomb went off at the entrance in order to provide a cover-up for several others who managed to barge inside as plume of dust and smoke rose over the large compound of the ministry. Insurgents disguised as international security troops battled with the security forces for more than two hours. However, they all were killed in the end according to security officials. Already beleaguered citizens of the country are feeling petrified in an increasingly hostile atmosphere in the country. Today the situation has become more frightening as now the attacks have become multi-pronged and it is not just the Taliban but outfits claiming their allegiance to the Islamic State and other small groups are also carrying out attacks. The repeated terror strikes come as a major blow to the United States that has been using multi-pronged strategy to bring the Taliban to a negotiation table and successfully conduct the democratic exercise of the elections that have already been delayed by months. The citizenry that has been in a state of distress and hardship owing to various socio-economic issues is enthusiastic to participate in the elections. However, it seems to have been successfully discouraged by the repeated mayhems created by the insurgents on the streets of Afghanistan. <laughs> Taliban and other insurgent groups in the country whose endeavor is to topple a democratically elected government and impose a strict Sharia law have been unrelenting in their attacks even during the holiest month of Islam, Ramadan. Taliban has rebuffed the Belivan peace offer made to the insurgents by the Ghani government in February. In fact, they announced the start of the new spring offensive dubbed Al Khandaq on April 25th. The Afghan leadership has repeatedly accused Pakistan of providing safe heavens and training facilities to these terrorists. The political infighting has worsened the situation as politicians are more involved in strategizing for the elections. Moving on. While the Afghans have been finding their own country increasingly insecure owing to rising terror and violence, they have found a sense of comfort and hope in India, where a large number of people have temporarily settled in recent years. India, which has been supporting Afghanistan in developing infrastructure in its own country, has also been providing a conducive atmosphere to its citizens to live an honorable life. A report. India has over 10,000 refugees from Afghanistan and scores of them live in Lajpat Nagar area in New Delhi. People come here not only to seek security but also for setting up and growing their business. Afghan General Store in Lajpat Nagar area has refugees from Afghanistan who deal in providing basic products and services for people from Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan Though Afghanistan is a war-prone nation, yet the bilateral ties between New Delhi and Kabul continue to be strong in terms of import-export and inter-government relations. 
वो तो सभी को पता है कि अफगानिस्तान और इंडिया का रिलेशन बहुत ही अच्छा है गवर्नमेंट के जो बीच है और नॉर्मल पीपल के जो बीच में है बहुत ही अच्छा रिलेशन है और हमें यहाँ पे गाने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं होती ऐसा महसूस होता है कि हमारा कल्चर सब कुछ इसी सेम ही है दोनों मुल्कों का तो यहाँ पे हमें हमें घर की तरह लगता है यहाँ पे कोई दिक्कत नहीं होती सारे फैसिलिटी जो इंडियन लोग के लिए हमारे भी भी है और कोई यहाँ पे दिक्कत करने की वाले बात बिल्कुल है ही नहीं कि हमें कुछ बात दिक्कत करे चाहे पुलिस हमें तंग करे या कुछ और चीज़ ऐसे कोई बात नहीं है हम बहुत रिलैक्स फील करते हैं और बहुत खुश हैं यहाँ This refuge is affected by the escalating violence, crime and loss of livelihood back in their country. Find India to be supportive and helpful in their business endeavors apart from ensuring their safety. India has been a regular host for refugees from various countries since its foundation. India aims to provide further support to Afghanistan through trade and other exchanges. Moving on to India the land of multiple faiths and cultures Tamils around the country and world celebrate Vaikasi Visakham the incarnation of Lord Muruga the son of mighty Hindu Lord Shiva with great religious fervor thousands congregated in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu to pay obeisances and participate in the 10 day annual grandeur people revere the lord for it is believed to drive out the evil spirit and secures dharma on the planet have a look Thousands of devotees and pilgrims throng the Murugan temples during the conclusion event of the 10-day long Vaikasi Visakham festival. Popularly known as the Chariot Festival or Rath Yatra, this annual auspicious occasion takes place during the summer season in the Indian southern part of Singam Punari town in Tamil Nadu. Sri Sevuga Perumal Ayanar Temple hosts the massive celebrations where the chariot is decked up and moved around the temple in veneration of Lord Muruga, the god of courage, wealth and wisdom. Hindu devotees cutting across all walks of life offered prayers and were seen dancing as the cavalcade rallied through the packed roads of Singam Punari town. Hey, there is a little bit of water. Old and young alike devotees at the festival partakes the traditional chariot pulling as the colorfully decked up chariot made to roam the circumference of the temple four times as a ritual. Meanwhile, the Hindu priests were seen sitting atop the chariot along with the idol of the Lord Muruga. Marking the festival in ritualistic manner and as part of the custom, devotees were seen throwing coconuts at a wall, which symbolized a unique way of praying and showing devotion to Lord Muruga, and who invoked blessings upon them. As a custom, Tamils across the world observe the festival with pomp and religious fervor. Devotees also perform special rituals as part of the festival. Dressed in their traditional attires, thousands of pilgrims from the coastal town and their adjacent areas carry milk pot and reach the temple on foot and perform abhishekams as a symbol of devotion and obeisance to the god. Here, many people are coming. After that, they are going to the temple. 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 Lord Shiva is the archetype of supreme consciousness and intelligence and if there is one god who became guru of Lord Shiva it is Muruga who is also known as Skanda Subramania and Kartike Shiva created Muruga as an ideal divine personality with unparalleled courage and wisdom Muruga is the lord of kundalini and guides his devotees to attain perfection in life The festival also manifests the diversity and uniqueness this country possesses. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.
You're watching Tag TV.